I was playing an app called Scrapple Go and this man got in touch with me and he said that he was in the army and he was serving in Afghanistan. I felt very, very um, sympathetic towards him. And we talked on there for at least two weeks, maybe three. We built up quite a rapport. He told me that he was divorced, that he had a daughter. He was like, oh, Berna, you know, I can, I feel I can really, really trust you. Can I ask you to do something for me? And I was like, okay, what's that? And he said, um, could I ask you to access my bank account and transfer some money from his account to pay a bill? And I was like, okay. So he gave me this um, website for this bank and it was a bank called Horbix Bank. Um, so I went into it, looked like a pretty legit site, um, went into the bank account and it showed that he had 7 million 200 US dollars in his account. Um, he wanted me to transfer some money. So I put the transaction through and it came to, you know, press send to make the transaction go. I did press send, but instead of saying, yes, it's sent, I suddenly came to another screen. And this screen said, please enter your tax code, you owe money in taxes. So I messaged this guy back and I said, oh, you know, it's asking for your tax code. What's your tax code? So he said, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do because I've got to pay them. And he was like, it seemed like he was panicking. So he said, I know what I'll do. He said, I'll send an email to the bank and tell them you're my sister and you can act on my behalf. I sent an email to the bank and they said, basically, um, yes, we, we've heard from Timothy and we are expecting you to make the payment. And I told Timothy, I said, I can't, you know, how do you, and he was like, oh, please get a loan or borrow the money or find something. You know, I've got the money in the bank. I'll pay you more, I'll pay you triple. And I was like, no, it's not happening. Now thinking about it, if I had the money, I think I would have sent him the money. We are human and we crave interaction. I spoke to a friend and she said, Berna, there's something dodgy going on here. So I looked online and I found action fraud. It took me about two days to build up the courage to phone Action Fraud. The lady on the phone said, don't worry, it's fine. She said it was a case of romance fraud and he was trying to get your money and you're not in any trouble at all. You are the innocent party here. She listened to what I had to say and she assured me that I had done nothing wrong. And, you know, I really, really needed that that support. My advice to people would be, number one, make sure you're talking to who you think you're talking to. And secondly, if someone is asking you for money, stop and think, why am I sending money to this person? Is it a real person? There are so many grammatical mistakes that I wasn't aware of at the time. I just didn't think. And that's the problem. You don't think. You just, you presume that everybody is genuine. You know, because you're genuine, because you haven't got anything to hide, you expect everybody else to be. But unfortunately, these are professionals. They know what they're doing. But instead of going into your house and breaking in, they're kind of breaking in through, through you.